Hello friends, welcome to Programming Concepts. My name is Amit and this is part 54 of ASP.NET Core MVC tutorial. In this video, we will set up our knowledge base for learning concepts like .NET hosting, Kestrel server, in-process and out-of-process hosting. In this video, we will discuss the common phenomena of how request reaches to server. What is IS, Apache or Nginx? What is DNS? Other similar stuff so that we can understand concept related to .NET Core like Kestrel server, in-process and out-of-process in a better way. Alright, in our previous videos, we discussed dropdowns. So if you are interested, you can watch them. I shared the link in the description. First, let's understand what happens once we complete our development process. Till our previous video, we created a very basic application that is responsible to perform CRUD operations. Right? Now what? What should be the next step? Now we have to host our application. We can host it on our laptop or we can purchase a server for it. The server is also like your laptop but more powerful. Right? For now, let's assume our laptop is our server. So I have a Windows laptop. You might have Linux or Mac OS. Right now, my application is there on my laptop only. Now, we need a static public IP to expose my laptop to the outside world via the internet. And this public IP will act as address to my laptop. How to get static IP is a separate topic. You can please Google it. Here, the idea is that this static IP is unique and is the address of my machine. Once we have all these things ready, we need some intermediator which will act as a bridge between the client machine to my laptop. And this intermediator is the internet. End user type our static IP and it will hit our server or laptop with the help of internet. But remembering IP is difficult. So we need some easily remembering name instead of IP. To achieve this, DNS provider will help us. DNS stands for domain name system. You must have heard DNS providers like GoDaddy, Cloudflare, Azure, Google Cloud, etc. They will take the responsibility for sending requests received by any user when they type our website name. We will tell this DNS provider that if anybody types, let's say, www.proconcept.com, this means this user is trying to reach an application hosted on my laptop. Just like your home address or phone number are unique, similarly, domains and static IPs are also unique. If this URL is unique, DNS will provide us with this domain name. If the website name is not unique or already taken, they will ask you to select some other name for your website. Alright, so now the end user don't have to remember my static IP to reach me. When the end user opens their laptop, try to browse my site, they will type www.proconcept.com. Now with the help of the internet, this request will reach my DNS provider. And then my DNS provider will check this address belongs to this IP and sends a request to my laptop. Simple, extremely simple. Obviously, there are other steps involved in between, but from our understanding point of view, this is good enough to begin with. Now, there is one problem. Even if DNS sends a request to my laptop, my laptop is not capable enough to receive this request. Think of it in this way, someone sends a private message from India to a family living in the US. Like in the ancient age when messengers deliver messages, travel via horse or ship and convey the message to the receiver. Don't take it literally traveling from India to US via horse. As most of our audience know, in India we speak Hindi and in US, English is the primary language. So I pick this example. Now the problem is, this messenger only speaks Hindi and the message he has is also in Hindi. But the family living in the US only understands English. So what do you think what will happen? The whole effort is a waste. But wait, there is a solution. The family living in the US can arrange some person who can understand both English and Hindi. That will resolve our problem. Right. In the internet world, that intermediator is a web server. So when the request is sent to our application or our laptop or our server in the form of internet packets, we need something called a web server 
that can understand this language and make our application understand what this request is for. Simple, extremely simple. So the next question is, how to make our laptop or a normal server a web server? So to make your laptop or server a web server, you need to install this software. Just like if you install SQL on your computer, it will act as a SQL server. If you installed Oracle, your computer will act as an Oracle server. If you install SharePoint, your computer will act as an SharePoint server. Similarly, if you installed web server software, your computer will act as a web server. Simple, again, extremely simple. Now, there are multiple organizations that are making or maintaining web server software like IIS by Microsoft, Apache HTTP server, which is an open source web server maintained by Apache Foundation. We also have Nginx owned by F5 Networks, which is also extremely popular among developers. Not only these three servers, there are multiple web servers in the market, also a few organizations creating their own custom web servers. So if I have to define web server in layman's language, then we can say web server is software Focus on the word software, not hardware in itself. A web server is software which serves website on the internet. If you copy and paste any website URL, I literally means any website URL, you will observe it starting with either HTTP or HTTPS. I'm not going to cover what HTTP is, explore it by yourself. So we can also say a web server is any internet server that responds to HTTP requests and delivers content and services. Because if you have to communicate with Facebook or Google via browser or internet, you have to type their URL and their URL starts with HTTP. Simple, again, extremely simple. You need some software or code capable to receive internet requests and you get these capabilities with the help of web servers. So let's recall our request pipeline. If we installed the web server software on our laptop or server, then our system is ready to receive requests via the internet. I know the very basic example, but I'm sure you get the idea of what is browser request or you can say HTTP request. What is DNS and what are web servers? Now the questions which might comes to your mind is what is Kestrel? What is in proc or out proc hosting, etc. Which we will explain in our upcoming videos. These are small but very important concepts for our upcoming videos. All right then. That's it in this video. If you have any queries related to the content of this video, do ask me in the comments. Till then, thanks for watching.